And now we all know the elites here have always held up Europe as a model for the way things should be here in the United States. So their entire understanding of the region is based on boondoggle conferences they attended in Vienna or fond memories of their junior years abroad in Paris. I'm not going to read your novel, but I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes, I'll bring it to Gertrude Stein. She's the only one I trust with my writing. You, you'll show my novel to Gertrude Stein? Give it to me. Uh, I'll bring it to you. She gets back from Spain tomorrow. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get it. I, I'm going to... I can't tell you how excited I am. This is giving me such a lift that my, my heart is just racing right now. Okay, but... but no, no, what, 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 okay, I'm going to get it and then I'll be back. Paris is so exciting. Well, they're always jealous of Europe's high gas prices. They marveled at its guaranteed multi-week vacation time, free government health care, and they came to love Europe's persistent anti-Americanism, its growing hostility to Christianity, even its refugees from North Africa and the Middle East. Liberal journalists fawned over the always brilliant Angela Merkel in Germany. If only we could have a leader like her. People in Europe are starting to talk about Angela Merkel as the leader of the free world at the moment. Mm. That America has ceded that position. When Europeans talk about the leader of the free world now, they talk about Angela Merkel, not Donald Trump. She is the most important leader uh, in the free world right now, in my uh, estimation. Well, that's a good clue that it's not worked out so well for Germany. The Germany she left behind is not looking so hot today, is it? Because we see the stark truth. Europe, in many ways, is collapsing. Its leaders are giving up. It's a total basket case. Life for normal working people there is increasingly miserable. There's also people who already live on Social Security, who have then also taken the step of getting additional food at the food bank. All of these price increases are paid for by us, the small medium business owners. You try to not turn on the air conditioning, to take the car less, but still there is anxiety because you have to think about doing things that were normal before. So sad. Let's review what's happened there in just one month. Today, 10 years after he was considered the savior of Italy's currency, Prime Minister Mario Draghi resigned and Parliament dissolved. Now to France, where the country there is a total mess with Emmanuel Macron's split government, once ridiculed by the elites, Marine Le Pen's National uh, Front Party, National Rally Party, is no longer fringe. It received nearly 42 percent of the vote last April. And last month, the party got 89 seats in Parliament, up from eight. Of course, the U.K.'s uh, Bojo, Boris Johnson, who didn't govern as a populist, is a fake populist. He was forced out and yesterday made his final appearance before Parliament. Mission largely accomplished. For now, hasta la vista, baby. Well, Brexit was accomplished, but I'm sure you wanted that to happen. And now the euro, well, that's in the toilet. It's actually in parity with the U.S. dollar. And we know Europe is completely hapless. It's almost given up vis-a-vis -vis China. They're not strong or principled enough to resist any of China's aggressive economic news and moves. Don't hold your breath there. Europe's energy policy, that's in tatters, because we know that they're run by the Greeniacs, which is killing them. And as we approach cold weather months, they're essentially going to be begging Vladimir Putin for whatever gas he's going to send down that Nord Stream 1 pipeline. So energy rationing, you heard it in those clips we played earlier, is being seriously discussed across the EU. In fact, it just unveiled a new gas rationing plan this week, urging all 27 member states to reduce gas demand by 15 percent from August through March. How to use less energy is the new European battle cry. So we're all supposed to be happy today that, I guess, Russia reopened Nord Stream 1, but we find out it's still not operating at full capacity or even half capacity. So Russia is able to play games with a Europe that is not strong enough to defend itself against Russian aggression. Now, remember how the establishment here derided Trump when he went over to Europe and he told the European leaders that they had to become militarily stronger. They had to spend more money on their own military. Diplomats dumbfounded 
by President Trump's barrage of attacks on NATO allies. President Trump criticizing our NATO allies, attacking uh, uh, the EU. The Trump administration has undermined NATO. Trump has consistently attacked our allies, great and small. Now, first of all, let's remember that under the NATO uh, agreement, they're supposed to spend 2% of their GDP on their militaries. Okay, pretty much no one's doing that. That's all Trump asked them to do. And of course, who can forget the reaction of the European leaders when Trump demanded they begin to fulfill all those NATO commitments? Well, even with all of their problems here, our economy is still stronger. It's still more resilient than Europe's. Now, in 2021, our GDP was about $23 trillion or so. The GDP for the entire EU, which has, again, 27 member states, was just over $17 trillion. And remember, this is important. They have more than 100, they have 100 million more people than we have here. And our military, it's far bigger and stronger than all of the European unions combined. And we, we say thank you to the U.S. taxpayers for that. We're still carrying the Europeans on our backs decades and decades after World War II. But remember, the left here is working overtime to dismantle both our economy and our military, as the angle demonstrated this week. They don't want us to be stronger than Europe. They want us to be as weak as Europe and essentially folded into that idiotic rules-based international order. Now, we should learn the hard lesson here. Americans are not going to be saved by Europe or the liberal world order. China doesn't give a rat's you-know-what about Tony Blinken's rules-based international order. In Europe, Europe can't save itself. So we are going to have to save ourselves. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.